Hello, everyone. Welcome to Stream and Hub Radio. I am Sage Stevens, the host of Shout Out with Sage. And today, my guest it hails from Montreal. He's a French Canadian actor that you can see in the new Paramount film Mercy, opposite of John Voigt and Jonathan Rees Myers. He is also on ABC's A Million Little Things, Netflix's The Night Agent and a host of other TV shows and films. He currently is in production of a documentary with uh, that they talk about racism in soccer, and it is called Red Card, the, Col the Color of Football. And today I want to welcome to the show, Sebastian Roberts. Hi, Sebastian, how are you? Hi, Sage, I'm excellent. Beautiful weather, thank you, how are you? Cool, and you are in, LA, right? I am. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, cool. So I'm glad you're here. How did you end up being an actor? Oh boy, we're jumping right in, aren't we? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. The, the short version is uh, tragedy happened in my life and mm -hmm. I decided to change my career. You know, I, I, had a, I had a kid when I was very, very young and I, I, I got a job that I, I um, didn't pick necessarily. I kind of needed to, to provide for my family. And then when that tragedy happened, I said, you know what, life's too short. It's time to think about me. I'll take care of Jesse, who's my son, but mm -hmm. uh, what do I really want to do? You know? So it was a, a life changing moment for me. And, um, I had done plays in high school, obviously mm -hmm. amateur and some improv two and a half years of improv tournaments here for fun. <laughs> and I thought, you know what, that would be a great way to release this, a lot of emotions I had going on at the time, right? So I just uh, took some workshops, um, uh, and, and next thing you know, teacher says, you know, you got some talent, you should go to school. And it didn't take long. I ended up in, in theater school in New York and my career picked up. It, it happened very quickly. Um, so the tragedy in my life is is the reason why I, I, I switched, I made the switch. So this is the, my life today, I see the positive. It took a negative. Right. Well, everyone, yeah, lots of people have really traumatic experiences and life-changing moments, and sometimes that's needed to sort of make you realize that maybe you're not, you know, fulfilling your life path or something like that. So how long was it from um, that, mo that moment of tragedy to, to you actually pursuing acting? Like, how, how much of a span was that? Uh, after the tragedy, I mean, I, it, I, I probably a year, a year and a half after the tragedy, um, mm -hmm. I decided to actually, I saw, I was working, I saw an ad in a newspaper about <laughs> workshop acting workshop. Uh, and, and I ended up being intrigued and, and I uh, was in that moment. I mean, the tragedy, I lost my twin sister to suicide. I can say it. It's been a while now. That's, mm -hmm. you know, I don't hide it. It's, it's documented. It's out there. Um, mm -hmm. And um, after a year and a half of having all these emotions, and I had uh, a lot going on outside of that as well. So uh, a young Jesse, a young son. So when I saw that ad, I thought, oh, you know what? Why not? It was, ended up being a workshop at night, twice a week, just like a lot of people do. Right. And that teacher, uh, Warren Robertson, actually, who passed away, I think, last year, uh, said, you know, I'll just I'll make a phone call. You, a couple of weeks later, I ended up in a neighborhood playhouse in New York. So it went very quickly. Uh, that was a year and a half after uh, the tragedy that I ended up in New York. And then shortly after that, I started working quickly in French. French is my yeah, French. Name. Right. So you went from Montreal to New York or you were already in New York? No, I was in Montreal. I went to New York to, to, for school. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you were already in New York doing things and living. What was... No, no, no. I was in Montreal. I was living in Sorry. Montreal, New York for, for school. Okay. Okay. And then I went back to Montreal, yes. Okay. I understand. Cool. What was the biggest obstacle when you first got to New York for you? Honestly, I, I, um, I don't think that there was no obstacle. I mean, I no. really <laughs> needed, I really needed the, the escape, mm. uh, the release, anybody that's taken acting lessons and stuff. It's a, there's a lot of trying to open up and uh, I remember my teacher 
after a couple of weeks saying, you know, you're a lot more sensitive than you allow people to see. And he would tap my chest and say, you know, you got to let that, you know, you're ex hockey player and macho. And, you know, you gotta, <laughs> you know he, he, I remember he told me once, he says, um, hurt pays a lot more than anger. And then I always mm. start because, you know, the macho guy, this was, he, he was telling me, but I agree with it now with, with mm. you know, 20, 20 something years later, I, you, you have a choice sometimes the macho guy has, you know, you get angry and you, you know, right. but sometimes you, you just not, are you really angry? You're just hurt. You know, you're allowed to just. Yeah. To be vulnerable, you need to let yeah. people see that vulnerability in you because, you know, everyone puts on their mask and yeah, you know, I'm so tough and nothing oh, can hurt me. Right. I, exactly. And, and um, it was, a, it was a good lesson for me because, uh, I, you know, living with all the, the other actors, there's people from all over the world at the playhouse in New York and it was, they all had a different story and they all, it was a healing process for me because there was a lot of emotions that I could share with these people. And there's a lot of things I could share during the scenes that we would pick. And so the timing was great. The timing was great. And um, yeah. Right. My one acting teacher, she always would say, you can only act what you know. Like if you haven't experienced it, it's sort of hard for you to act it. So I think that those of us who have, had a lot of ups and downs and maybe some bad things happen, then we have more to draw on for, for our acting when we, when we're up there. So. I um, would agree. Yeah. I mean, I think you can use imagination. There's a lot of people that would say otherwise. Yeah. Should, absolutely. But when you've lived through something, I think that's, it's, it's another level of depth for sure. Of right. understanding. Cool. Now you're in LA. What brought you to LA? Well, I've been coming, you know, here for a long time now, back and forth. I, when the weather is bad, I, you know, <laughs> half live here, half live, I go wherever. The, if I'm not working on something, and now the auditions, everything's online, right? So you can right. Zoom. So I don't have to be in, in one specific um, place. My son is, is grown now. Uh, so I, I just, you know, the winters, many times, I mean, if I'm not shooting, I'm, I'm, I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, and also because of, I had some, some important meetings with the documentary. Um, uh, right. Red color of football, which is, is great. I got involved in as my first uh, project, getting involved as an executive producer. I got on on board because last year the strike, there was not much to do. Um, I was originally supposed to do uh, produce a film with this production company years ago, and um, so they knew I wanted to produce, considering there was no acting, and they were doing a documentary. They said, Sebastian, you want to get on board? Uh, it was perfect timing, so. Um, it's been, it, it kept me sane during the strike, <laughs> to say the least. Something to do so you're not like, yeah, not being bored. Tell me a bit more about Red Card, The Color of Football. You're an executive producer, and this is your first time as an executive producer? Yes, it is, actually. Um, there was a film, like I mentioned, with, with right. the same I was supposed to do, and then COVID hit, and that kind of, uh, it was a co-production with Germany that, the, the COVID hit and we weren't allowed to travel. And, and um, so I, it's been on in the back. I never picked it up again. Mm. There was other projects that were on the table for me that I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, the, it's a, this film, I, I would have to lose weight and all this stuff. So there was a lot of prep. The timing just wasn't right. So um, it's been in the, it's, it's been, it's been shelved for now. And then when he got, when he mentioned, let's just do the, the red card. Um, mm. um, yeah, so I, it's, you were asking me about, what's it, what it's about or yeah what's what's it about how did yeah what's red card about it, well, he approached me the company likes to do projects that um help the world or like to improve it or you know uh, save the whales uh, yeah like it. social social commentary social justice stuff like yeah that. there's a lot of films that they like to, to to do good by the world so this this racism in soccer through friends uh, that they have, they, they, the, the, the um, our director did the Martin Luther King Jr. documentary, uh, the, uh, Donovan Bailey story. The, there's a lot of, there was a lot of connections, um, with some, uh, minorities that had, that had gone through, uh, racism. Uh, and so the whole project, one of them was a soccer player, the whole project came about and then a little bit of research and next thing you know, there, there's definitely, um, there definitely needs there's room for improvement so to speak. <laughs> yes there's your, always uh, room for improvement i would imagine you know as as a you know 
white guy. We love to hear the stories, and I think that the stories that we're that we're getting on tape right now need to be heard. It's just this is, sometimes it's mind boggling to see just the level of racism and the level of things that they're still said in, in, in out there, especially in Europe. Just, okay. uh, especially in Europe. So um, we have, I think we're three quarters into the to filming, and, and we have some some phenomenal uh, phenomenal stories, uh, and um, I think it's going to be a film that will uh, hit home for a lot of people, or at least to educate people that this is this still this still happens. It still still right. goes on, and, and um, it shouldn't. Right. How do you decide? How do you decide um, on a project to say yes to, whether it's acting or producing? What what draws you to something? Well, uh, f first of all, I mean, it's who's who's um, who wrote a, uh, mm. directing producing who's behind it who's the team and what have they done in the past right uh, it, obviously uh, if, if they've been very successful in the past it's already a yes before I can even read the script so to speak mm -hmm. um, so that, that that's that's the main thing and and then obviously if the script is not good there's not there's not much you can do so it, it <laughs> script, ultimately the script is is um, is yeah the, the main but right. if it's if it's a you know if it's a team that I I'm already impressed with and, and that I like I know the script can't be that bad right now will I right. love the part like the part adore the part you know the more complex the character is the more I'll be happy um, but sometimes you know sometimes you, you know characters aren't aren't your favorite but right. it's the phenomenal story you do the project so I don't love all my characters. I don't, uh, sorry, I don't love all the scripts and all the jobs that I do, mm -hmm. but I try and, um, and I, it's a challenge to bring something that I will love. Right. You, will you, love. you find something in it that you like and you, you go from there. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, what opportunities is has there been anything that you've said no to that later you went oh maybe i should have said yes to that um i don't i don't think so no because you know when you're starting a career not that my career has obviously i'm not a beginner but when you start your career you pretty much once you get cast you you you, you take all the jobs that you can then you get to a certain level where um this is your job then you you then you have to pay bills because you don't have a second job anymore. Once you're, you know, a working actor, that it's that level of okay, um, I don't need another job. I make good enough money, but but then then you're not at the level where you can turn down these certain, I don't know, lead roles for for. I don't want to say networks, but certain uh, <laughs> for certain, uh, you know, lower lower level. Yeah, it's not all Spielberg and not all. Right, right. You're, you're not on the level. You have to build your career. So you, you take the, the character and you build something and you try and, and, and bring something to it because you also need material for your, for your reel, right? For your demo reel. And, and so sometimes there are clips and snips and something that, something that you come up with the character that, that you can use for your reel. So there's that level. And then once you get enough of this stuff and you, you prove yourself through so many casting directors that, that need to know who you are and stuff. So that, it's that level, right? So I haven't gotten to the point where, yes, I do turn down certain things. Um, but um, it's rare because the things that I turn down are the things that my, my team, my agents, my manager bring to me are, they already know where I'm at and what I like and what I don't want to do. So mm -hmm. um, it's already filtered. So I can't say that, um, that I've turned down a whole right. lot. Okay. I don't, I don't think I'm on that level. Okay. I understand. <laughs> Speaking of agents and managers, how did you get those? How did you get an agent and a manager? Was that through relationships or they came to you or you reached out to them? Uh, depends. I mean, it, it, it's different in the beginning, right? I, uh, I, once you climb the ladder in the acting world, I, I, I think you change agents, you know, the, the mm -hmm. agents that have the, the biggest, obviously when you start your career, you can't be with CAA or, or, you know, the, the Gersh the UTA. Yeah. You start, uh, for me, Canada was the same thing. So I changed agents a couple of times as I was climbing the ladder, and I, I, I felt certain, you know, certain agents, agencies have more pull, more, 
more weight having certain all the stars and so um the, my team right now i i called them i'm looking for representation and um it was you know i mean i i have a, a pretty good resume i was i was working yeah. um, so it, it wasn't it wasn't they were happy you know and and again then it becomes uh, it becomes the 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 um, our characters you know do we do we do we fit together do we do we gel as far as uh, personalities uh that was the main thing because these uh i think that's the most important thing because a lot of the agencies you hear these things that people are leaving their agents and they're with these big agencies and they said oh my god this agency is so bad you know you're, well, why it really comes down to the relationship between you and your agent you and your manager because that's what's key it's mm -hmm. not it's not it's not the the agency per se it really comes down to the agencies that are good that are that are well known it's just they have to the, does your agent believe in you do they push are they jaded with you sometimes you need a, sometimes you need a change right you, you, I, your hunch you got to follow your as an actor you got to follow your hunch and if it's time to move sometimes it's time to move right you know? what would your biggest tip be to an actor wanting to move to la and, and start Well, I, I will start by saying it depends how old you are. This <laughs> <laughs> might would be different uh, depending on your age. Sure. But um, I would say you, you you need to be very strong and uh, strong-willed and uh, dedicated. And it, you need to be aware that it is not all sunshine and rainbows. The um, I think uh, Brad Pitt said it, I think, in a speech. I don't know if it was the Oscars, but you know, it's it's a very lonely place. La La Land. It's a very lonely place, Los Angeles. I mean, everybody from all over the world come to Los Angeles because their mom, dad, uncle, and aunts, they would say, oh, you're so pretty. You're so good looking. You, you should go to LA and be a model or be an actor. So there's a lot of people from all over the world that come here with this dream, which is great, but it makes, it makes, uh, it, it, it changes the energy a little bit. And I, and I think that you've got to be really well surrounded uh, with good people around you in Los Angeles. I mean, I think that's true in any city wherever you are in the world, but more so in Los Angeles, just because people say it's, it's fake. I, I, I don't want to use the word fake. There's a lot of great places, a lot of great people around here, but just you, you do, you have to surround yourself with, with people that actually don't suck your soul because mm -hmm. it's soul sucking Los Angeles. You know, when you're chasing that dream and, and you're seeing a lot of money around, there's a lot of money around and then there's, there's a lot of struggle. So, um, it could, it, it could be tough. It can be tough. You got to be on, only the strong survive. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of um, yeah. There's a lot of people that come here. You know, they were a big fish in a small pond, and now they're just a minnow <laughs> swimming upstream. It's, right. It's very true. I mean, I, I I tell people, you know, there's there's 250 cat. I mean, that the number might have changed. I've been yeah. I've been told the story years and years ago, and I repeat it, but. You know, there's 250 casting directors in Los Angeles. 50 of them are huge. So, like, there's 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 just there's a lot of there's a lot yeah. of roll up your sleeves and you gotta you gotta do the work because um, there's a lot of talent here too. I've audited a couple of acting classes, not recently, but in the past, and there's a lot of talent. Right. Need that break, you know. When you when you work on a role, do you use a certain technique, something you developed yourself, or are you Meisner or Uta Hagen, or, you know, how do you, what tools do you use? Yeah, over the years, I mean, I, I did Meisner, I went to, to school, you, but, you know, Meisner did say, whatever works is a technique. Right. You know, I, I, I've, I don't, certain, depending on certain scenes, I, I, you know, I, it, it changes. So I don't really look at techniques anymore. Maybe I mean, in the beginning, you know, you, you, might as well, you would do repetitions and this and that. But now, you know, I, I know how to get to the, to, tr to the truth. And I just know how to, how to, whether I use what I've lived, whether I use my imagination, or I use something, something that I've, I've, that's happened to me before. But I think at the end of the day, most scenes are just the, the listening and answering. Right. There's a lot of, you're not always crying and you're not in, always in these heavy scenes that, that are, that are, um, then you got to dig deep in your psyche or in your past to, um, to get to the point where you need to go in that scene. There's a lot of scenes where it's just, you know, it's being truthful, mm -hmm. uh, and, and no bullshit and, and no bullshit. I think for me, the biggest thing I see the difference with, you know, the 1% or the, the, 
the actors that are stuck doing smaller roles is, um, is um, I call it CTB choices, transitions, behavior. You know, the, the, the people say, oh, Meisner would say, there's no BS. I don't know. There's this, that's BS, right? You, you, you weren't really saying that. Um, so there's truth in, in the words that you say, be truthful, but there's also mm -hmm. truth in behavior and in mm -hmm. transitions. So in a script, you know, that's where the, that's the biggest difference, being truthful in your behavior. An ounce of behavior is worth a pound of words. So if you're, if you can be truthful in a scene, when it's a fight scene, and great people are great in, in acting classes and stuff, they'll do the scene. Um, but it's easier to be truthful with words than it is in behavior. Mm -hmm. And behavior never lies. So I think that for me, in, in the in my experience, I think the biggest uh, difference between the established actors, the ones that are in the one percent that work consistently, mm -hmm. versus the other ones, is it's that little thing because most of them can do a scene that's really good. They could mm -hmm. they can pull it off. It's once you have a once you're a regular or a lead, you have a lot more scenes. Can you be consistent in every single scene? Right. And I think that that's where sometimes it comes in where it's in the behavior. Not so much in the words. Hmm. Like I, matching their actions to their intentions. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And also, and then, and then you throw in transitions. Um, you know, sometimes in, 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 a, in a scene, you, you know, you talk about one thing and then you transition to another. So how you, how you transition. It's easy to see the page in many actors, right? Especially the ones that aren't, that are beginning. I, mean, I was like that. I still have some... I still have some <laughs> They beta tapers or VHS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you. I've, I've, I've got some stuff I definitely don't want anyone to see ever, like ever, ever. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not easy. It takes a long time to get to. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I remember. Yeah, I, I remember this one acting teacher. You know, you're just folding your laundry, and I just didn't get it. And then one day, you know, you're like, oh, I get it. <laughs> like, just, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. supposed to be folding your laundry, right? Yeah, absolutely. So what are you working on now? What's other than the documentary, what else are you up to? Well, uh, it's funny because uh, I've been telling my agents what is going on. There's, I still feel like we're on strike. It, it's, it hasn't I've heard that from a lot of people. It, it's Apparently it's been documented. There's, a, there's not much going on. Uh, one of my agents was saying May. He's seeing things kind of start off right now. I mean, there's there's a couple of things that that uh, were on the table that weren't fitting for me. Um, mm -hmm. that I, but thank God I have the documentary, and it just it, it, it's, it's not as busy as I I, I thought. Right. Uh, you thought I, that it would come back faster. I, well, I thought that uh, they they need content, right? They need you would think <laughs> what I thought. So I don't really know what's going on, but it will it will it will pick up for sure. Um, there is, there is a, there's a film that I, I, I it looks like I, I might be doing and producing in Japan in the fall. So I'm kind of mm -hmm. looking, looking, I'm, I'm, yes. So if you want someone to like go over there and help you out, I lived in Japan, Hajime Mashite. So I totally, I love Japan a lot. So let me know. Absolutely. Yeah. What's yeah. that film about? Can you talk about it or it's a little bit too soon or? It's, yeah, it's a bit too soon. Okay. Uh, I mean, it, it's. I'll say CIA, AI, uh, murder. Okay. Uh, the, yeah, I, I don't want to get into it too much. <laughs> it's like a suspense thriller or something like that that you. Psychological yeah. thriller. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. What What draws you to a certain script? Like you were saying that you sometimes have to act in something that you might not necessarily be drawn to, but if there is something, what do you usually like to do? Uh, so, so, what, do you mean? what what type of scripts are you or roles are you drawn to? Like, well, are you, like, yeah, the psychological. Uh, multi, as, as, I like drama. Psych, I mean, as soon as my characters have are multi layered characters. As soon as um, I can actually play a lot with, with um, stretch the elastic, so to speak, from the good guy to the bad guy. Okay. Um, for example, the film in Japan I'm talking about, there's three characters. This, the, he's, he's undercover. There's a lot of things going on. 
all the, these things, or the good guy you think is the good guy ends up being the killer. All the, all the, as soon as there's more than one uh, level and one um, uh, different levels to this to the character, mm -hmm. uh, I, I absolutely dive in, and um, I love it. Yeah, like twists and turns and depth and absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, those are those are the kinds of characters that that I will scripts that I will read first, one hundred percent. The romantic comedy. <laughs> Not really it's, your thing. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I can I can do it, right? But it's just not my niche. I don't think that that's where I can turn heads, so to speak. Okay. No, it's not my forte. Okay, got you. What's the best piece of advice someone has given you in acting or in life that you use? There's 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 been a for acting. There there's been quite a or life, whichever. Yeah, no. There, over my twenty-something years of acting, there, there's been quite a few. One actually, which is, you would think it's not much, but I, I actually remember the moment. It was a casting director, um, and it was one of my first, first couple of weeks, couple of months. You know, maybe my third audition, fourth, fifth, something like that. And I remember she said to me, she said, "Fast, remember this: always underplay." Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a life quote and it's not, I have a lot of those, but as far as acting, I think for me, that was a turning point, that small underplay. Mm -hmm. So I guess I was probably like a lot of people when you start off, you know, action, you, you, you play, you, you put on <laughs> exactly the, the red, the dot, they know the camera's on. Yeah. <laughs> you got to do something, right? Right. But you don't, but you don't uh, unless you do a theater, that's different, but. So I, rem I always remembered that. And she said, this is very just under underplay. So in my choices, I always had in the, in the back, had that in the back of my head. And um, her name is Jennifer. I remember that. And it's, it's been, it's been, it's a small note, but <laughs> less is more. It helped me a lot. And I always think that 20 something years later. Amazing. Is there anything else, any other sage advice someone's given you? Oh, my God. Um, I wouldn't what comes up how long is this interview but i i, <laughs> I, I uh honestly i don't i don't nothing comes to mind i mean this is there's been i know there's been a lot but right now you're putting me on the spot what's it's uh, okay def no definitely, definitely definitely to keep your head up and, and like this is not going to be an easy industry right i met okay. i worked with some really great um uh, people early on in my career and they told me to uh buckle up right and mm -hmm. i i've i think that my personality i I can take rejection and know where to put it. Carpent, carpent, carp compartmentalize. Compartmentalize. See, the French just came out. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, because you you can't let it get to you. You can't let it's it's not it's not personal. It's not it's never personal. So it's hard to 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 get all these no's and these. I don't see them as rejections, but um, so you got to know how to deal with that because the and I remember he said buckle up and I, I kind of know what he means now. You just gotta roll with the punches. I don't know if that there's another career you know, outside of, of, of acting that, that you get uh, rejected so many times and yet you're probably doing great because yeah. if you get rejected so many times because they're bringing you in because you're, you're going in and you're being seen. So, um, you know, but it doesn't make it, doesn't make it easier. Right. Um, right. Just learn to live with it. Is there anyone that's really helped you in your career? Anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to that was, I mean, it could also be something, you know, someone that slapped you and kicked you on, <laughs> kicked you down the road or someone that actually helped you nicely, whichever way. Uh, yeah. I'll be honest. I'll, I, I, I was on my own for a, a long, mm -hmm. for the, the, until I got to a point where, um, a different level of when I became a series regular and I'm a mm -hmm. lead in films, I had, I had a, um, I have to give a shout out. Well, my, my, one of my team, both, I'll say both my teams, but Nigel Mikowski was my agent. One of my agents now is, is also a good friend of mine. And he was a friend before an agent. I didn't know how good he was because he was <laughs> in Vancouver. I was in Montreal and Toronto. And I, yes. But, um, uh, him and, uh, and Ryan, I mean, another agent that those two agents that I've had for a long time in, in, in Canada, are uh, people that believed in me and guided me to 
whether it's from Montreal to Toronto and then my Toronto, what kind of rules are in Toronto. And then, you know, there's a lot of politics involved and there's a lot of um, 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 tax credits. So local, to the, right. those, the local talent first, this happens here as well. Atlanta, people move to Atlanta because, well, there's a lot of, when you start out, if you're a name, doesn't matter, they'll, they'll hire you no matter where you live. But when you're starting out and you're climbing the ladder, um, where you are, that's who you're going, they're going to see first. So what kind of roles were in Toronto? Me moving to Toronto, being a local in Toronto, then transferring to Vancouver because they, they were very, very supportive. And um, it was every move that I made was turned out to be the, a good one. Mm. And I, I, I could say that these, these two icons in the industry were their friends and they're, they're, they're the biggest shout out that I would say um, as far as where I'm at right now in my career. Is building relationships really important to a career? Do you feel? It, number one, mm -hmm. uh, that's something that um, my, my agency I'm pretty good at keeping relationships and making sure that. Um, um, well, first of all, you to keep relationships, you got to make sure you're you're professional on set. You know that that they want to maintain that relationship. If you're uh, a, a bad boy, I'm going to go. <laughs> Uh, right. you, you know, you, but if you're a professional, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I, this, this, this industry, it's too hard to be, uh, a diva. Mm -hmm. the, the road I'm taking, the road I've been on, um, I know that you hear it and there's plenty, maybe in Los Angeles, but probably all over the world. But for me, uh, to be a diva, there's certain things that, that uh, I stick to for my character, the boss is the director and the producer. And I'll, I will bring up. I will bring up things you have. You can't be shy about bringing all you know certain ideas, and then sometimes you want to stick to your guns. But at the end of the day, you know you know who the boss is, and and um, and I think the, people appreciate the fact that I've that I'm professional, respectful, and um, that's why it's always been easy for me to keep contacts with the people that I've worked with in the past. Mm -hmm. Has there any been a has there been a time when you were on set where something was a little difficult or you know uncomfortable where you felt um or it's always been professional and everything's always rolled easily for you well there well no there are i mean nothing um nothing that's uh for me that that would be concerning as far as um um ethics right. ethics right. i i from i i don't know i don't know so but there's been very difficult scenes uh, different right. di difficult moments where uh you know, I played a I played a rapist in a movie in mm -hmm. Germany, uh, mm -hmm. and th those scenes were extremely difficult. Um, so the prep of it, uh, uh, we had to start over. One 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 time, I actually started crying in in the scene. Mm -hmm. I think I over. Oh wow! I just we had to start. It, it was it, it takes its toll. I love the challenge right. of that, right. but it, I started crying in the scene, and because of what had happened in my, mm -hmm. there's certain things that connected me to to not not obviously not to the rapist, but <laughs> that, that I that I know. So it, it, it got to me and then we had to, we had to cut and start over and all that. There's, right. So there, there's, there's been some moments like that where uh, also, also what I'm doing to this poor girl, right? It's, it's uh, <laughs> right. It's, it's so the, the, those, those, there's been very challenging scenes that I love, but nothing ethically. I've always yeah, been yeah, yeah. Cool. What, um, where do you see yourself in the future? in five years where, where are we going to see you what's 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 success to you oh good question success it's funny i was talking about that um with a, a buddy actor of mine uh, i think yesterday or two days ago um what is success because there's a lot of people you know uh, that that i don't that will say how much time do you give yourself what do you you know do you do you, how long are you going to give this this industry a chance right. And, and you're like, well, because some think that if you're not Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise, like what, like the stars, that there's no, you can have a wonderful career like I have, and there's still room to grow and there's still, you know, right. steps to climb. But, but you, the, 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 the amount of people that are Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise are, are minuscule yeah, compared exactly. to the working people. So, so a lot of people don't necessarily know, they don't see some of the stuff that I do. And there's so much content out there now. They don't even know, they don't, they like, you know, is, is, is he still struggling? I'm not, I'm not struggling. But <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, there's ton, there's a lot of working actors. Like there's a lot of people who are constantly working. Are they Brad Pitt's or Tom Hanks or 
Colin Farrell or whoever, no, but you know, they're consistently acting and yeah, making right. a living. So, so what is it? What is success? What I think that uh, for me is as long as I, I, I can do what I love and I can, mm -hmm. I can, I'm healthy. Um, I, I, I do. I, if you drop the billion dollars in my account, I would still be doing this. Right. I would, I would, I would not stop acting. It's therapeutic for me, and I love it. I want, to, I'm, I'm, I want to produce more. So for mm -hmm. sure, I want to control um, a little bit more what I do. That's always been in the cards, and I think that I'm getting to the point where I have enough uh, um, on my resume that I, I can actually. Uh, I have good people around me, mm -hmm. um, finance people, and I think that uh, once the cards are starting to line up for me to uh, outside that this documentary is, is great. Right. But after that, as an executive producer, you also, um, not that I want to put myself in every movie that I produce, but I do want to control a little bit more and yeah. um, have more control uh, in, in the, in the projects that I do. Yeah, of course. I mean, if you're helping behind the scenes, that's sort of why people do it so that they can, if you're an actor, obviously it yeah. can help with some acting. Well, where do we find you online? Oh my God, me and online, I'm old school, right? <laughs> I don't, I don't. Um, it, my Instagram is uh, Sebas Roberts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sebas so Roberts, but that's, I mean. Sorry, you broke up, a, you, you broke up a little bit there. Could you just repeat that again? Sebas, short for Sebastian. Sebas Roberts, mm -hmm. S-E-B-A-S Roberts. Mm -hmm. Sebas Roberts, um, that's my Instagram. I don't I might not have a Facebook, Sebastian Roberts, but I, I don't, uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's difficult. It's, for me. it's different. You know, I, I remember years ago, DiCaprio mm -hmm. said this in an interview, the more you know me, the less believable I am. Right. And, and that was before social media. I understand that people love that and stuff, but it's true. The more that you put yourself out there, the, it, and, and acting is the only, as an artist, it's the only, um, job that will, that, that actually you don't play yourself. I don't want people to know Sebastian Roberts. You want to be believable. Like my family right. knows me. It's the, it's the people that actually say, oh, there's seven on TV in the movie. It was, yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's, it's harder for them to um, not to watch. Right. But if you're, if you're a painter, if you're a singer, if you're, it's great. Social media is great because you are who you are. The more they see you on social media, that's great. But as an actor, it's, 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 it's not something that I, you know, and I understand that we've got to do it. And I, just, I haven't, I, I haven't turned the corner. I'm on there. I'm on there. I, I, I mean, as long, as long as we can stalk you a little bit, you know, just show some like nice pics every now and again, you know, that's, that's, that's all we want. That's all we're asking for. You know, that's, you know what I actually <laughs> And then my son sends me a message. Oh my God, dad, delete that. Oh, really? <laughs> so it's funny. Uh, I, mean, I do it. I do it. You'll see on the Instagram. I mean, I, but it's just not, and it's not the best. And I'm sure I'll, I'll get a team on that at some point, maybe. It's okay. You don't, yeah. You know, just the pick every now and then, you know. <laughs> well, anyways, well, thank you so much for joining us today on Shout Out with Sage. Thanks for taking the time for letting me interview you. And um, thanks, everyone, for joining us today and watching. And see you next Wednesday at 4.05. So. Bye everyone. Thanks, Thank Sebastian. See you see you out and about, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Bye.